Hi, and welcome to our uh, new topic of discussion, complex numbers. Um, and this will really be an exciting and fascinating journey. Uh, I hope um, um, I'll be able to convey some of the beauty of the subject and how it's used in various forms. Um, now, as you can see, uh, I've written this title in two parts, uh, or rather in quotations, complex and numbers. Um, the reason being, one of the questions that often gets asked when we start talking about complex numbers is, um, are these numbers for real uh, in the sense that do they really exist in, in the world? Um, it's a very interesting question to start a discussion um, and it'll take us a, a sort of through a somewhat philosophical route uh, on the ideas of mathematical uh, generalization. Um, but um, there's a very fascinating discussion uh, on this very topic uh, in the book uh, in, in, in the book by the physicist Richard Feynman uh, on his lectures series on physics uh, and I'll try and point out the section uh, and, and, and the volume of the book where this uh, discussion is uh, given. Uh, so, so, so I'll just borrow some of those ideas and um, from there let's start building um, sort of uh, our intuition for why complex numbers are known as numbers in the first place. What is it? Why are they complex or why did they sort of end up with the name complex? Um, and, and this will sort of help us address the question, how real are complex numbers itself? Um, now in order to do that, it's, it's very uh, uh, useful to step back a little bit and think about the other numbers that we're familiar with and how real are those numbers. Um, and, and again, let's just borrow uh, the ideas discussed in the book uh, by uh, Richard Feynman um, um, and, and, and start from there. So, so let's say we only knew of positive integers. Now that's a very nice and natural starting point because positive integers come about very naturally when you want to count objects, for instance, right? So, so let's say we only know of positive integers. We don't know any other number system. Um, and then let's sort of start uh, building um, our case for uh, other kinds of numbers and in, uh, which will sort of culminate into uh, complex numbers. So, so let's say uh, we are given a certain number of sticks. So positive integers, uh, as, as we just discussed, sort of naturally follow from our need to count objects. So let's say we are given a certain number of sticks. Let's say we have one, two, three, four sticks. And we add another stick to this. So we have another stick, one more stick to the four sticks we already have. So we have four plus one equals five sticks, right? Um, so let's say we uh, write this operation in a somewhat more abstract notation and say that given A objects, we add B objects to this and we end up getting C objects. In our case, uh, since we only know positive integers to begin with, all these objects are positive integers. So for instance, in this particular example, we have we can take a to be 4, b to be 1, and we end up getting 5 sticks. So given a objects, we add b objects to it of the same kind, and we end up getting c objects. And we define this operation as that of addition. Okay, so that's one of the operations we can define with positive integers. Now another operation that follows from addition is um, given a objects what if we add these a objects to themselves b times so for instance we might have a sticks and we add another unit of a stick and repeat this process b times repeating this process b times so we end up getting b times a and we can call this another integer c uh, or positive integer so we have b times a equals c sticks and we define this operation as that of multiplication so we call this multiplication all right um, now even with these two rules even with these two definitions of let's say addition and multiplication it turns out that we can define a certain set of rules that positive integers follow. Um, what are these rules? Let's just review them a bit. So one of the rules uh, we know is that if we are given a plus b, 
then we know that a plus b is equal to b plus a. This is the rule that addition commutes, right? So, um, so if you are given two positive integers, for instance, uh, 1 plus 2 equals 3, which equals 2 plus 1. Um, another rule we can define is a plus b plus c equals a plus b plus c. So if you are given three positive integers, it doesn't matter in which order we add them, right? So this is the rule uh, that says that addition is associative. Um, we can also make, make up some rules for multiplication. So for instance, we might have a times b equals b times a. So multiplication of positive integers commutes. Um, and then we can have the associative rule for multiplication. a times b times c is a times b times c. Right. So again, associative uh, rule for multiplication. And we can also combine the rules for addition and multiplication in uh, what's called the distributive uh, law for uh, multiplication distributes over addition. So a times b uh, plus c equals a times b plus a times c. Um, so let's just work with these rules for now. Uh, there are a couple of other rules, for instance, but uh, and let's just say that any object a, uh, which we denote uh, abstractly as a, b, c, any set of objects that satisfy these set of rules, we'll just call them numbers. So these rules are what we associate with what we'll call numbers. Rule for numbers, right? So if we uh, find certain set of objects satisfying these rules, we'll just call those objects numbers. And this leads to some very interesting consequences. Uh, in particular, let's say um, we go back to our basic equation that, uh, that the, the definition of addition, that a plus b equals c. And uh, so we started off with an example of a certain number of sticks and we add uh, more units of sticks to it and we end up getting another positive integer number of sticks. Uh, and positive integers for now is our only notion of numbers because they satisfy the set of rules that we just listed. So let's say we are given this equation and somebody were to come and ask, okay, um, you've given me this equation. Can we generalize this and ask the question, is there an object, uh, let's say B, which gets added to, let's say a number five uh, to give us another positive integer three. So is there such an object? That's a question. Um, now, if you think of this in terms of number of sticks or anything real uh, that we're familiar with, what we're saying is, okay, we're given five sticks, five. Can we add something to it such that we end up getting three sticks? Um, now that seems a little bit counterintuitive, right? Uh, it's not something um, that we can imagine doing a real experiment right now that, okay, we're given five stakes or five coins and we can add something to it to get three. Um, and this is where a very key idea comes up, which is mathematics takes its own momentum and you can generalize and define a new object. Let's, uh, uh, for instance, in this case, we know that the new object is B equals minus two. So if we define a new object, which looks like minus two, if we add five to it, we end up getting three. Um, now, if you think about this, this is a very, very uh, profound sort of step forward because given our intuition about re working with real objects and counting real objects, it's not at all obvious, it's not at all obvious what uh, an object which looks like minus two, minus three, minus four, and so on will look like in the, in, in our hands or in the real world. Yet, we know that if we define objects which looks like minus two or minus one, minus two, and so on and so forth, minus three, uh, if we define these set of objects, they also satisfy the rules that we listed down for the set of positive integers. And, 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 and it's very natural for us to think about these objects today because we know that these are called negative integers, right? So these objects are called negative integers. And together, the set of negative and positive integers is what we call the set of integer numbers. Numbers, because they satisfy the set of rules we started off with. Um, and yet, it's very hard to justify uh, or to 
think about uh, negative numbers, negative integers in terms of counting certain number of objects. Um, but today it's sort of part of our intuition, right? And that's really the key idea behind taking a, a certain set of equations that we worked out just from our knowledge of positive integers and trying to generalize them to higher other and other objects that satisfy the set of rules which we associate with, with what we call numbers. Um, and so um, let's take this idea further and see what other kinds of numbers we come up with which may not be very obvious to justify right in the real, right in terms of counting numbers uh, which is which is the way we started thinking about numbers but however they have their own set of uh, they, they have their own life uh, so in certain cases we can associate them very easily with something that's real in other cases it may be a bit it may seem a bit more abstract um, but as we all know we we know many other numbers like rational numbers irrational numbers that together constitute a set of real numbers and, and so let's just work these out um, one step at a time and see where it leads us and what kind of equations uh, fail with the set of numbers that we've already defined. So uh, there'll be certain set of equations that fails for the set of numbers that we've already defined, which will force us to introduce a new set of objects. Uh, and if those new set of objects satisfy the rules that we associate with numbers, we choose to call them numbers. So um, let's do that in the next part and think about other kinds of numbers that we're familiar with and see how far we go with it. So see you in the next part of the video. Thanks.